Excuse me, Miss Mitchelson. Would you mind explaining why you're taking the day off so suddenly? There's a lot of work I need you to do for me today. I've noticed you've been taking much more time off after coming back from maternity leave. I hope you're not planning to use the fact that you waited until you were 41 to have your first child as an excuse to slack off at work. The pregnancy must have been hard on your body considering your age, but you're the one who made the choice to get pregnant. That's neither my fault nor this company's. I understand that you must be happy after finally conceiving after being married for 15 years, but you still have your responsibility to this company. This is your job. I expect you to do it. Good morning, Mr. Sanders. I'm terribly sorry for calling in with such late notice. If you've got time to apologize, then you've got time to work. I explained the reason I took the day off to Nancy. She's the one who answered when I called in the morning. My daughter suddenly got a high fever. I was worried about whatever she may have spreading to the other kids at her daycare, so I decided to keep her home from school today. I was just about to take her to the doctor, and since I don't know how long I'll be waiting, I thought it best to take the whole day off. A fever? Oh, come on, that's probably just a cold. Why get so worried over just a stupid cold? Put the kid to sleep and turn on the TV for them or something. I need you here! Mr. Sanders, my daughter is only a year old, and fevers can be caused by a number of things. It could be something serious, and I don't want to take that risk with my child. Stop dodging the issue! You know full well this is our busiest time of the year, Mitchelson! Do you have any idea what kind of burden your absence is putting on the rest of the employees? I'm really sorry about causing trouble for everyone else, but it's my primary responsibility to look after my daughter's health and well-being as her mother. I can't leave her behind and go to work in these circumstances. Of course you can! I think any mother would feel the same way as I do. I'm taking today off, Mr. Sanders. I don't believe this. If that's your attitude toward work, you're fired! Mr. Sanders, you're the office manager. You don't have the authority to fire me. So what? I can just tell my superior about your continued insubordination and he'll fire you. There's nothing you do in your job that couldn't be handled by anyone else. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No one is irreplaceable, especially not you, Mitchelson. Oh, is that so? Then go ahead and fire me. What? I can't leave my child alone at a time like this. I'd be neglecting my responsibility as her parent. Ha! So you're choosing your child over your job. Have it your way. Enjoy unemployment. That should teach you not to cross me. <laughs> Hi, Megan. How's your daughter doing? Much better, thank you. The doctor prescribed us some medicine. She's sleeping soundly right now. Ah, oh, that's great to hear. Thanks for asking. By the way, Mr. Sanders came into the office earlier and said that you were fired? I thought you were just taking the day off to care for your daughter. Did something else happen? I was so shocked to hear that. I'm sorry to have worried you, Nancy. He said that he'd fire me if I put my daughter first, so I told him to go ahead and fire me. Wow. What is he thinking? We're totally lost around here without you. He told me that I'll be in charge of all your old duties now? Oh, about that. I thought that something like this may happen, so I put together a manual some time ago to keep things moving smoothly while I'm gone. You did? Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. However, that was something I started doing under the previous manager. You remember Mr. Rogers? He retired about a year ago. When Mr. Sanders came in as a replacement, he told me that it was a waste of time and to stop working on it. That's ridiculous! A waste of time? What is wrong with him? Oh, don't worry. There was a pre-existing manual, titled Manual 5. So I kept working on my manual in secret and attached it to the end of the old one. It's in my personal folder in the shared cloud storage, so go ahead and copy it into yours. If possible, do it at a time when Sanders isn't around. It might get messy if he found out about it. Gotcha. Let me look for it. Oh, found it! Excellent! There are some technical things that are difficult even with the manual, so it might take some time to get used to everything. 
Hey, it's better than nothing. Thanks so much, Megan. Let me know if I can help you out in any way. Seriously, though, how can they fire you? Mr. Sanders must be out of his mind. I'm gonna go and give him a piece of my mind after lunch. Nancy, it's okay. Calm down. I don't want you to go getting yourself in any trouble. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. For now, I think it's best if you keep your head down. But Megan... It's okay, Nancy. Do you think I would just let myself get fired without having a plan in mind? A plan? I know it may be hard to wait, but everything will become clear soon enough. Hello, Miss Mitchelson. Um, would you mind coming back to work right now? It's a mess over here. <coughs> Miss Mitchelson! Good morning, Mr. Sanders. Oh, good, you're there. Now please come into work. I'm sorry. I was under the impression I wasn't working there anymore. Nothing official has happened yet. You're still an employee on the books. I'm afraid I'm not. I've already tendered my resignation to the main office. What's the main office? Aren't I your immediate superior? Why would you go over my head like that? Because upper management lost their confidence in you. That's impossible! Didn't you hear that our office is merging with the branch in the neighboring city? You knew about that? You're being demoted, aren't you, Mr. Sanders? How did you know about that? I made a report to upper management about the way you treated me when I took the day off to take care of my daughter. They called me in to personally apologize, and they told me everything. They apologize for what? I didn't do anything wrong! In the middle of the corporate push to support employees with young children, you tried to force me to come into work rather than take care of my sick daughter. And when I refused to come in, you told me to, quote, put the kid to sleep and turn on the TV for them or something. That's quite an irresponsible thing to say, don't you think? And to top it all off, you told me I was fired when you had no authority to do so. But why would they shut down the whole office? If you don't understand why, that just goes to show your incompetence as a manager. What do you mean? Not to blow my own horn, but I was carrying quite a lot of weight on my back at that office. When I became pregnant and was about to give birth, I talked to the previous manager, Mr. Rogers, and decided to start making a manual for my job. Unfortunately, Mr. Rogers retired due to an illness. And when you took his place, you told me that the manual was, quote, a waste of time and told me to stop working on it, even though I was just a few days away from completing it. I finished it in secret anyway. You kept working on that stupid thing? Even with the manual though, my job is highly technical and difficult for an inexperienced person to pick up in a short amount of time. In short, you fired someone who was doing a job that no one else at the office was capable of doing. I did. And as a result, the company was unable to find someone who they could train to do that job. The office's performance declined precipitously to the point that even ordinary work could no longer be done. So, upper management swiftly took action and decided to merge our office with the one in the neighboring city, where they do have an employee capable of and experience in doing my job. Why don't you just come back to work then? That'd solve everything. I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? While the circumstances are unfortunate, I had been planning to retire for some time now. You were? My husband is set to receive a substantial promotion at the company he works for. And as a result, we're moving to a location that's too far away for me to continue working there. I was just about to speak to you about this when you made the decision to fire me. Oh no. So, it looks as though the merger is inevitable at this point. I can't believe it. Why is this happening to me? Wait, it's the manual. You finished it, right? Where is it? Wouldn't you like to know? If I can get my hands on it, we might be able to avoid the merger. I'm sorry, but I've already handed it over to upper management. No! When I told them, I gave it to Nancy. They said they would greatly appreciate me giving it to them to use at the new location. They were quite happy to receive it. No way! What about me? What am I going to do now? That's something you'll have to think about on your own. I climbed all the way up to office manager. I'll be going now. 
I was on my way up. I was going places. Do take care of yourself, Mr. Sanders. Farewell. I was the office manager! Hi, Megan. It's nice to talk to you again. Hi, Nancy. How are things? Me, my husband, and my daughter are all doing great. Thanks. How are things going at the new branch office, Nancy? It's great. I'm finally getting the hang of your job now. That manual was a really big help. Glad to hear it. Oh, by the way, about Sanders? What about him? He got fired. <laughs> he did? Yeah, this new girl in the office he had his eyes on for a while announced that she was getting married, and Sanders went absolutely nuts. Wow. He broke a bunch of the office equipment on his way out, too. I heard he got hit with $20,000 in damages that he's got to pay off now. That man is something else, isn't he? I also found out recently that Sanders had been divorced twice. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I believe that in a heartbeat. <laughs> the guy is just plain nuts. Oh, hey, my boyfriend's here, so I gotta run. Good for you. You have a date today? Yeah, we're going to the zoo. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks, will do. Talk to you later. I was wondering how a guy like him managed to become regional manager. But it turns out he had been taking credit for his subordinates' work. This all came to light during the merger. So Sanders was already hanging on to his job by a thread. Then when he had his outburst in the office, it was all that upper management could take and they got rid of him. He was put on leave without pay the next day. And the next time he was seen in the office, he was packing up his things. No one said anything to him. No goodbyes or misuse. Such a sad way to go. He's now living on his own in a tiny apartment near the old office, but he seems to be unable to find a job paying as much as he was making before getting fired. So he's currently working multiple jobs and gradually chipping away at the $20,000 he owes the company. Hey Ellie, you're all working late tonight to finish up some year-end work and once we're done, we're gonna go out to celebrate. What? Marshall, what are you thinking? You know my due date is a week away. Yeah, and? The baby could be born any minute. I need you to come straight home so we can be ready. What? The baby's not due for a week. Why are you so anxious about it? Marshall! My mom told me a while ago that I was born one day early and my brother was born two days early. So I don't see any reason to worry about anything for at least a few more days. Marshall, every pregnancy is different. A due date isn't a sure thing. It's just an estimate. Would you listen to me? I'll be at home for the last three days until your due date, so get off my back. Don't try to use your pregnancy to control me, Ellie. Chill out already. You think I'm using my pregnancy? Look, just lay off of me until three days before your due date, got it? I'm going back to work now, so I'm not reading any more messages until I come home. Marshall! Hey, Ellie, you realize it's New Year's Eve, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. There's only three days left until my due date, so I'm even more conscious of the calendar than usual. Oh, so you did know? Then why aren't you cleaning the house? Huh? You always clean the house from top to bottom on New Year's Eve. Why haven't you done it yet? Get to work! I've done what I can, Marshall. I can't do any more than this being so close to the birth. I'm not feeling well today and I don't want to risk hurting the baby. Excuse me? I did a little bit in the morning, and I think I might have kind of pushed myself too far. Oh, come on. All you did was wipe down the windows and tables. That's no different than what you always do every week. You have to understand that these are not normal circumstances. How little do you think of me? Don't you appreciate how hard I work to provide for you at all? You can't do even a little cleaning to show your thanks? With the baby coming so soon, to be honest, I have way more important things on my mind. You're unbelievable. And besides, Marshall, where did you go? You said you were going to the store to get a snack, and you've been gone for three hours. Yeah, I'm gonna stay at a buddy's house, have a New Year's party tonight. You what? 
It's your fault for not cleaning the house. How am I supposed to relax and enjoy the new year in a filthy house? My buddy's a bachelor, and even his house is cleaner. But Marshall, you said you'd be at home with me. The due date is three days. Don't you remember your promise? That was when I thought you'd do your job. You want me to come home, clean the house from top to bottom? I don't want a single speck of dust left, got it? Now? It's already 6 p.m. Yes, now. You're not doing your part in this marriage, Ellie. Either clean the house tonight or we're getting a divorce. Stay up all night working if you have to. Divorce? Are you out of your mind? You've gotten lazy and controlling ever since you got pregnant. I mean, come on, really? Your due date being three days away is no excuse for not doing your work. Now get to it! How many times do I have to tell you? A due date is an estimate. The baby could be born any time. There you go again! You're still using your pregnancy to try and control me. You need to clean up your act and fast. I don't want you raising my kid to be a controlling little brat like you. Did you just call me a brat? Anyway, this conversation is over. Either clean the house tonight or I'm divorcing you tomorrow. Happy New Year! <laughs>
Didn't you just get a message from Ellie's line account? I told you I would message you from my own phone. Wait, that was you, Mom? Of course it was, you nincompoop. Wait, but I thought you were at home. What are you doing with Ellie and why do you have her phone? Oh, I see what's going on. Ellie's at your place, right? She probably told you all sorts of ridiculous things to get you on her side, right? That's just like her. Mom, don't listen to a word she says. I have no idea what she told you, but she's been using her pregnancy as an excuse to treat me terribly lately. She even tried to skip out on her animal cleaning. Can you believe it? What I can't believe is that you would make her clean the whole house so close to the baby's birth. Oh no, you too, Mom. What's the big deal? The baby isn't due for three days. Ellie is in the delivery room as we speak. What? Her water broke when I messaged her this morning to see how she was doing, and she asked me for help. I called an ambulance for her, and your father and I both rushed to the hospital to be with her. We also called Ellie's father. He's here with us right now, too. The doctor said both Ellie and the baby are in critical condition. All we can do now is wait and pray for the best. Well, for real? But why would the baby be born so early? Me and my brother were born a day or two before the due day, but Ellie had three whole days left. Three days is a long time for a full-term pregnant woman. Is it really? You didn't know that? Just what have you been doing all this time Ellie has been pregnant? Have you learned nothing? Well, I mean... And by the way, you told me that Ellie was going to stay with a relative for the birth and that she wouldn't be at home, didn't you? I didn't want you to worry about her, plus I thought that if I spoiled her too much that she would never become a good mother. It's not Ellie's abilities as a mother that have me concerned. It is yours as a father. Hey, what hospital are you at? I don't believe you, Marshall. You don't even know your wife's doctor? Hey, it's not my body. Marshall, don't bother coming. What? Wait, Mom, hold on. I'll ask Ellie herself whether she wants to see you or wants you to meet the baby. When she makes a decision, I'll let you know. Come on, give me a break! You're a terrible man to have done this to your own wife. And think of Ellie's father. He trusted you to care for his daughter and gave his blessing to your marriage. And this is how you repay him. But I... No buts, Marshall. But... Didn't you say you'd get divorced if the house wasn't cleaned? There's still a high probability of you getting your wish. Huh? Do you mean... So you'll have to have that discussion as well. No, I don't want to get divorced. Hush, you petulant child. Mom, aren't you going to take my side? I said hush. I'll update you later on Ellie and the baby's conditions. But you should be prepared for the possibility you never see them again. No, please no. That is the gravity of what you've done today, Marshall. If you still don't understand, then think long and hard until you do. Why is this happening? <laughs> Ellie and the baby made it through just fine. She's been staying with her father and the baby ever since getting out of the hospital. And as for my son, one day Ellie's lawyer came by the house, delivered the demands for damages and child support, and had Marshall sign the divorce papers. Their divorce was finalized that very day. He's constantly whining that he needs money, and it seems like he needs another lesson. So we asked a friend of ours who owns a construction company to straighten him out. So with the aid of his enthusiastic colleagues, he's now embarking on the long and painful road to becoming a decent human being. My husband and I are planning to cut him out of our lives. And after a kind invitation by Ellie, we're considering moving somewhere closer to her and her father so that we can see our grandchild. Hey Naomi, I just sent this month's child support payment. Wow, a day early? I'm traveling for business starting tomorrow. I, I wanted to make sure it arrived in time. Oh, okay. I see you're as busy as ever. You never change, do you? You always working is why I got tired of being with you. And also why you lost custody of Sandra. Honestly, it still doesn't make sense to me. You cheated on me, you broke up our marriage. Why did you get custody of Sandra? The judge clearly thought you were too focused on work to raise Sandra properly. I guess you do have a point. I traveled a lot for my work. 
My parents have already passed, my sister is married and lives in another state. I don't even have any relatives who could help me out. I want to make sure Sandra has a good life, that's why I agreed to overpay child support. I'm giving you $2,500 a month. Double what you were legally entitled to. Yeah, your salary is basically your only redeeming quality. Thanks to you, we're doing quite well. Much appreciated. <laughs> Make sure you use it for Sandra. I know, I know. By the way, you're gonna get Sandra a cell phone? She's old enough to have her own. Why do you ask? She's a sophomore in high school. All the girls her age are phones. It's the only way they can keep in contact with one another. I figured Sandra might be missing out on a social life without me. She's not really interested in having a phone. Really? It could be good to have one if she ever got into trouble. I thought it would be for the best if she had one. Is that all you want? I have to go to work now. Can this conversation be over? I'll think about the phone. Okay, thanks. Give my love to Sandra. Hey, Dad. Sorry to message you so late. It's me, Sandra. Sandra? Is it you, really? Yeah. I found your number in Mom's phone. Oh, I see. I guess your mom finally gave you a phone then. Yeah. Mom got me one when I got into high school. All the other girls had one. And I guess Mom was hearing from a lot of friends that she should get me one. So, she wasn't really thrilled about it, though. Oh, well, I'm glad you finally got one. Thanks for messaging me. I'm glad to talk to you, Dad. But wait, last time I talked to your mom, she said that you weren't interested in getting a phone. Did you change your mind? I think she probably just didn't want us talking to each other. You think so? I've had a phone for a while now, Dad. She was lying to you. Well, I guess I can see why she would feel that way. She would probably get jealous if you were talking to me without her knowing. Hey, Dad. About custody. I'm living with Mom right now, but that's only until I'm 15, right? Then I can choose who I want to live with, can't I? Yeah, that's right. Wow, you were listening pretty well during the divorce. I want to live with you, Dad. You do? All I need is somewhere to sleep. Anywhere is fine. I'll work to earn my own money for food, and I'll clean around the house. Sandra, are you okay? I think you might need to help me out with the paperwork and stuff for transferring schools, but I'll do as much as I can by myself, okay? Sandra, slow down. You're aware how far I live, right? You're in New York and I'm in Ohio. Yeah, I know. I'm fine living anywhere, Dad. I don't mind moving. All I need is for you to say it's okay. Sandra, why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Well, Mom got a new boyfriend. Boyfriend, huh? I mean, Mom's single, so it's whatever. She can date whoever she wants, even if she has a daughter. But she kicks me out whenever he comes over to our house. No? I understand, and that's partially why I go to work as often as I can after school. But he's staying overnight more often lately. Wait, she kicks you out of the house overnight? Yeah, but there's a nice older lady living across the street who lets me stay with her, so that's not a huge problem. No, that's a really big problem. Also, I'm working three jobs, but we're still having trouble paying for food. I've lost 30 pounds this last year. You what? I'm giving her more than enough in child support. You are? She said that you haven't paid any child support since I started high school. What? She said your company went bankrupt, so you couldn't pay anymore. That's not true at all. My company is doing great. I've been paying her $2,500 a month, same as before. You're paying that much? I don't believe it. She's been lying to you about child support. What is she doing with that money? Like I said, Dad, I don't want to live here anymore. Mom's not here right now, so I thought this might be my only chance to talk to you about this. I understand everything, Sandra. Let's meet up and talk in person. I have the day off tomorrow. I'll take the first flight there in the morning. Can you meet me at the airport without Mom noticing? Yeah, I think I can. Okay, wait for me at the arrival gate. Gotcha. I can't wait to see you, Dad. Hey, Dad. Thanks for yesterday. No problem, Sandra. Where are you staying tonight? My teacher's house. She said she talked to you about our situation and said I could stay here whenever I want. So here I am. LOL. 
Glad to hear. Well, lucky you got placed with such a trustworthy teacher. Tell her I said thanks again. Will do. Okay, so just like we planned, we'll aim to get you out of there during summer break, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for helping me, Dad. I know you're really busy with work. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem at all. You're my daughter, and family always comes first. You can rely on me for anything. Thanks, Dad. I love you. Matt, what's going on? What did you say to Sandra? What's your problem? She says she doesn't want to live with me, that she wants to move in with you. It sounds like you've been talking to each other an awful lot, Matt. How dare you? I am her mother. I have custody of her. When she's 15, she can choose for herself, Naomi. What? Don't you remember? The judge said we should consider transferring custody to me once Sandra's 15. Wait. You're always traveling for business, though. You can't take care of her. You might be financially capable, but you'll be gone all the time. What will you do while she's home alone? About that, my company is creating a new headquarters here in Ohio. So I can keep doing my same job without having to travel as much. I'll be able to look after her just fine. And my sister and her husband are moving back into town, so when I'm gone, she can stay with them. There won't be any problem with her living with me. No way. Not to mention you're in no position to be objecting to her choice. What's that supposed to mean? I've been sending you $2,500 a month in child support, Naomi. What have you been doing with that money? Oh, well, you know, the usual stuff. Her tuition, transportation, tutor, supplies. She's going to a good private school. You know that costs money, don't you? Naomi. You know we've been talking to each other, Naomi. I know everything. How long are you going to keep lying to me? Uh, oh, um... You said she was going to an expensive private school. So you can imagine my shock when Sandra told me what was actually going on. She's going to a public school. She rides a bike to school, so she doesn't even need any transport. She doesn't have a tutor, and on top of that, you lied to her and said I wasn't paying child support. You made her take three jobs to pay for living expenses. I was at a loss for words when I met her the other day for the first time in three years. She was nothing but skin and bones. She's lost 30 pounds when she should be growing... She's lost 30 pounds when she should be growing. Do you have any idea what you've been putting her through? Oh, come on. She's just on a diet. Girls her age are sensitive about their weight. I'm not finished. What's this I hear about you kicking her out of the house at night so you can be alone with your boyfriend? What the hell is wrong with you, Naomi? Oh, my God. She told you about that? Yeah, she did, but that's not all. I hired a private detective. You what? I know you've been spending my child support payments on your boyfriend, Naomi. Oh, no. I also understand that he's there with you right now. So I bet Sandra's been kicked out of the house as usual. Don't worry, though. I've already arranged a safe place for her to stay. She's never coming back to you again, Naomi. What? Why not? It's Sandra's choice. I'm speaking to my lawyer tonight about taking over custody of her. You can't do that. What am I supposed to do with her child support payments? Yeah, the PI said you'd quit your job to spend more time with your boyfriend. But I'll be suing you to recover every single penny that you spent on your boyfriend or yourself instead of her. So you better find yourself a job, and quick. Oh, God, no. How much is that gonna be? I'll have to talk to my lawyer for a more accurate calculation, but based on what I've heard from Sandra, you're looking at something around $60,000. 60 grand? Roughly, yeah, like I said. My lawyer's working on it. You hired a lawyer? Yep, but I recommend you do the same. Matt, wait just one second, please. I don't understand any of this. What should I do now? Ask your lawyer. Goodbye, Naomi. I planned the timing for when Sandra's school went into summer vacation. This way, there wouldn't be any risk of Naomi coming to get her while she was at school. My former in-laws apparently talked some sense into her, so the custody transfer went smoothly. You should have seen the look on my face when the judge pounded his gravel. We found a great school for her in the area, and got her admitted just in time for the start of the new school year. Naomi? Well, her parents cut her off. She went into debt to pay off the money she owed me. When her boyfriend learned where she was getting her money from, 
He dumped her. With no one to support her and nowhere to go, she had to leave New York. Last I heard, she was working at a dive bar in some podunk little town. Hey, Sandy, did you get the wedding invitation in the mail? Oh, yeah, I did. I went ahead and put it in your room. Thanks. Whose wedding is it? Our friend from back in middle school, who I thought I would go since you went to the trouble of sending me an invitation. That's nice. I don't remember ever hearing about this friend before, though. Yeah, I haven't seen her in a while, but we found each other on social media. The wedding is next month, actually. We ended up getting invited pretty late in the game. Yeah, that's pretty short notice. Oh, by the way, a lot of my old friends are going to be there, so we're going to go on a little trip together afterward. <laughs> I'll be back in about three days. Wow, sounds like you have a lot of plans made already. Kind of wish you would have let me in on this sooner. Oh, yeah, I should have told you sooner. Sorry you had to find out like these. I was just so excited about seeing the old gang again. We got to talking, and before we knew it, we were planning the trip. I oh, hope you don't mind. I'm not mad or anything. I can understand why you'd be excited to see your old friends again. Thanks for being a good sport, Sandy. But I'm really looking forward to next month. Well, I'm going to go do some shopping now. Okay, be careful. <laughs> Jonah, are you at the venue already? Yeah, I was just relaxing in the hotel. They reserved an incredible hotel for the ceremony. There's a hot spring and my room has a great view. <laughs> this place is awesome! Sounds nice. You're at the Barrendell Hotel, right? The one that my cousin had her wedding at, with the wedding venue built into the hotel? Well, how did you know? It was on the invitation. Oh, well, that's right. It was, uh, that was three years ago, right? I think, right? Yep. Oh, hey, I'm afraid to call it. I've got to go. Okay, have fun. Talk to you later. <laughs> hey, Jonah, how's the wedding? Has the venue changed in the last three years at all? Huh? I don't notice anything particularly different. Uh, no, it's a pretty new facility, so when I think about it, I suppose it makes sense that not much would change in three years. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I'm looking at something pretty shocking right now. What? So this wedding for your old friend. You're the groom, aren't you? Uh... You look so happy in the chapel just now when you exchanged your vows. I haven't seen you look that happy in a while. The invitation you showed me was a decoy to keep me from being suspicious, wasn't it? What? Of course not! Hey, what's up with you? Is something wrong? Well, I'm just at the wedding as a guest, remember? Hey, the reception is gonna start soon. Uh, gotta run! Wow, you're really dedicated to the bit. How long do you plan on keeping it up? Beat? What beat? You know, your whole story about your old friend. Huh? Maybe you should just ask your bride about it yourself. I told Rachel everything. You what? <laughs> Sandy, why didn't you tell me? I had no idea you and Rachel were related. I was all supposed to know that. Do you have any idea the position you put me in just now? Well, I mean we're related, but not very close. Like third or fourth cousins. I only ever spoken to her once. It was at her great grandpa's funeral. I barely knew anyone there, so I just hung out with the other relatives my age. Like, we're not even close enough for her to invite me to her wedding. Then uh, how did you know? My great aunt was invited to the wedding. She saw you go into Rachel's room at the hotel yesterday. She sent me your picture and asked, hey, isn't this your husband? When I saw that, I jumped right in the car and drove to the venue. I sat in the very back row during the wedding. I wanted to see it with my very own eyes. Oh, boy. She probably didn't recognize you by name because you were using your old last name on the invitation. After all, you ended up taking my last name after our wedding because your parents had cut you out of their lives after a big fight a few years prior. You did a good job covering your tracks. I don't think anyone else caught on to you before the wedding. You told your little sob story about your fight with your parents to get her not to invite them to the wedding. And the only other guests from your side of the family were the actors you'd paid to be there. Yes, I know about that too. 
You're my husband, Jonah. You're a married man. So I don't want to hear you complain about the position you're in, seeing as how much you lied to Rachel. I didn't mean to. So mind telling me how this all happened? Since you're still married to me, you can't get legally married to Rachel. You understand that, don't you? I never meant for things to go this far with Rachel. I was only fooling around. But I can't hit it off with her parents while we were dating. Rachel started calling me her fiance, and well, here we are. You proposed? No. I didn't know this until later. But Rachel's family has this uh, thing about dating where you can only date someone you're intending to marry. Who all of a sudden they started planning the wedding, booking a venue, buying a dress. And I just got caught up in it all and, uh, well, that all led up to yesterday's wedding. Well, that's quite a story. But it sounds like everything is all your fault. Hey, uh, come on. Don't come on, me. Give me a break. The wedding was cooled off and I'm obviously going to break up with Rachel now, so uh, problem solved, right? Nothing is solved. What do you mean? You actually think there's no more problems here. Well, yeah. Rachel and I are breaking up. You plan an entire wedding with another woman, and you think this can be made okay by just breaking up with her? Well, I did spend a lot of money on the wedding. Sorry about that too, but hey, that just means we need to work hard together to pay it off. I'm sorry. Do you think our marriage is going to continue as usual after this? Well, yeah, we are still married, aren't we? I'm divorcing you, you idiot. Why? What kind of psychopath would keep on living with the man who betrayed her? Sandy, let's talk about this, okay? You're at your folks' house, right? I'm over there tomorrow. Don't you dare. Stay away from me, you lying, cheating moron. Sandy, I'm not a moron. <laughs> Sandy, please don't divorce me. And please don't sue me either. I don't have any money. Yeah, I bet Rachel's suing you too. Plus, you have to pay the actors from the wedding. Exactly, I'm completely broke. Uh, thanks for understanding, Sandy. You're a great wife. Hate to break it to you, but yes, I'm still divorcing you. And yes, I'm still suing you. I want a lump sum payment, by the way. What? Don't do this, Sandy. I already have to pay Rachel 100k for marriage fraud. If you have any feelings left for me at all, please at least don't sue me. Think of all the good times, okay? I have no feelings left for you at all. That all went out the window when I found out you were cheating on me. Hello. Plus, I can't get the mental image of your dopey smile when you said I do the other day out of my head. But let's be real here. Do you honestly not understand the gravity of what you've done? I don't have a dopey smile. Yes, Jonah. Yes, you do. Very dopey. This is getting exhausting. Can you manage to muster up a few brain cells and think for yourself? I don't want to have to explain this all for you. Sandy! Would you like me to tell you more about how dopey you looked at the wedding? You said enough already. I took a hilarious picture. I might post it on social media. Sandy, I'm your husband. Not for long, you're not. Sandy! By the way, your parents messaged me the other day. What did they say? Rachel contacted them to see if there was anything else you were lying to her about. They had no idea you were married to me or that you were marrying Rachel. They were pretty shocked. Well, I never told them, so... Uh... Also, if you cooperate with the divorce and move back in with them, they can get you a job and support you financially for a while. Really? Generous, aren't they? You'd better be good to them, got it? Yeah, I got it. Thanks, Sandy. Don't mention it. <laughs> Sandy, I'm being kidnapped. I just got thrown into a black battle van. Huh? I went to my parents' house yesterday. I thought I was going to be able to live with them. They said they were going to get me a job with company housing, but they didn't say it would be this company. What company is it? They've got a real bad reputation around here. I don't know if I'm ever going to make it out of here alive. Don't you think you're being a bit overly dramatic? No! They said it was a company that has a very 
thorough training program for new employees that are, well, like you. I think it sounds perfect for you. Consider it an opportunity to turn your life around. How can you be so optimistic about this? Anyway, why are you contacting me? Uh, well... You paid the lawsuit judgment. Our divorce is finalized, as far as I can see. I don't have any reason to speak to you ever again. But Sandoi! Goodbye, Jonah. Sandoi! Wise! Enjoy your car ride. <laughs> when my husband said he got cut off from his family, it seems like he meant that he couldn't handle their strict parenting style and ran away from home. I don't really know enough to say who was in the wrong, but anyway, Jonah started his work in re-education program at his new company. He's having a bit of difficult time adjusting to his new environment. I know because the other day, he called me from a public phone saying, please help me. What a loser. I just said, you're pathetic and hung up the phone. He tried calling Rachel too, but she gave him the exact same response. After a few days of crying himself to sleep every night, Jonah seems like he might just be on the path to becoming a semi-decent human being. Hey Carol, we need to talk. Yeah, well, why not just meet face to face so we can talk directly? I mean, we do live in the same house for Pete's sake. Well, that's because I don't want to see your face. Just thinking about seeing you makes me nauseous. Please, Amy, don't be like that. Please stop. Don't act like you're my mother. I don't consider you my mom. You married my dad, but you're just a stranger. You're not my mom, so get that straight. I don't have to listen to you or do anything you ask. You got that? Yes, I know how you feel. I know I'm not really your mom and I don't pretend to be. But why be so aggressive toward me? What exactly did I do to you? We've been living together for 10 years after all. I wouldn't call that being total strangers. Besides, we have to continue living together. But it's now just the two of us. James, your father, he left us too soon. I was also devastated, you know? No way I'm going to live with you. Just the two of us in this house? Are you serious? You know why? Because I plan on kicking you out of this house. Huh? What do you mean? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. After the funeral the day before yesterday, you're no longer my dad's wife or my stepmother, just a total stranger. That's being said, that gives you zero right to live here. So I want you out of here as soon as possible. Excuse me? Hold on one second, Amy. What are you talking about? Why? Why all of a sudden? We've been living together for 10 years. All of a sudden? Are you kidding me? I always wanted you out of this house. Ever since you came here, I yearned for the day you would be gone. I was totally against you guys getting married, although my mom left us all those years ago. She's still my real mom. Nobody can replace my real mom. I hated you all these years, always butting into my business, telling me what to do. I was sick and tired of it. And you expect me to live with you? Are you serious? Now that dad is gone, I want you out of here. And to never show your face in front of me again. Uh, I'm so sorry you feel that way. I realize that you always hated me. You always ignored me all those years after your father and I got married. But isn't it a bit soon? Your father just passed and the funeral was just the other day. Kicking me out just like that? I wasn't prepared for it. Where am I supposed to go? How should I know? I don't want to have to live with you and have you running the place like you own it, acting as nothing had happened. This house is where my mom and dad lived. There are memories here for me. I can't have you take over and change things, acting like it's yours. It's never gonna happen. Besides, Dad left everything to me, the house and all his assets. So I want you out of here, now. Uh, Amy, please. If I leave this house, you'll be all alone. Are you okay with that? It's a pretty big house to be living alone in. You may not like me, but living here alone? I can't let you do that. Are you nuts? Of course I'll be okay. I'm already in college and an adult for your information. I have no problem living alone. What? You think I'm just a kid and can't make it on my own? Is that what you think? No, it's not that. I know you're competent enough to live on your own. I'm just worried is all. Cleaning this entire house takes a lot of effort. And the cost of running the house and what are you going to do for meals? 
You can't live off takeout or fast food forever, you know. There you go again. Don't start with your lecturing. I'm sick of it. Like I said, stop with the mom act. But Amy, you're still a student. You need someone to look after you, at least until you graduate. I mean, financially, you may be okay for a while, but your dad's inheritance won't last forever, you know. You'll have to work sooner or later. Please, you're a stranger to me. Don't go giving me orders. I can take care of things. I'll pay all the bills. No problem. Just get the hell out of my life. But Amy, please, let me help you. Please stop. I don't want to hear anymore. Why can't you understand? Would you just back yourself and get the hell out of here? Okay, if you feel so strongly about it, I guess I have no choice. Could I at least stay until we finish with the rest of it? You know, he always wanted his ashes to be spread over the ocean. He always talked about it. I really want to be there for that. Couldn't I stay until then? Besides, I haven't packed anything. I lived here for 10 years. I can't do it in such short notice. And I want to go through my husband's, our things. No way I'm going to allow that. Are you nuts? I don't know what you'll steal while you're going through his stuff. I know what you're trying to do, just trying to stretch things out. End up staying here forever. I won't allow that. The funeral is over. Dad's gone forever. You mean nothing to me now. A total stranger. I own this house now. I will decide who lives here and that's that. You're not wanted here anymore. Just get that through your thick skull. Alright then. If you're so set on kicking me out, Amy, I have no choice but to leave. I'm sorry it had to end this way. Don't worry. I'll never return. But please understand that I won't be able to help you if you get into trouble, or if by chance you regret this ever happened. Regret? Are you kidding me? Why would I regret getting rid of you? Hello, Amy. I just finished packing all my stuff and moved out as you asked. Thanks for everything all these years. Take care of yourself. I don't need you informing me of your every move. What's the use? I have zero interest what you're doing. Long as you're gone, that suits me fine. I'm going to block you so you don't try contacting me again. Right. Sorry about that. This is a final message. Just one more thing. About the rent. There was just too much going on this month, so you don't have to pay. But starting next month, please pay as usual, okay? Excuse me? Rent? What rent? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the money. The rent that you have to pay for living there. We were all living there together, so I didn't ask for any rent to be paid, but... As you said, I'm a stranger now. Which means you need to start paying rent every month. I expect the rent to be deposited by the end of next month. I'm sorry? Say again? Why the hell do I have to pay you rent? This is my house. Dad should have made you pay all these years. Why? Well, that's obvious. The house you're living in is mine. Huh? Excuse me? Don't tell me you never knew. The house you're living in right now. The one you kicked me out of? I have the deeds to the house. It's always been mine. Hold it one second. This can't be your house. It's Dad's. It always has been. I was born here. I've always lived here. It's my family's home. For God's sake. I've been living here way before Dad ever met you. How could this house be yours? You totally lost it, lady. Your house? Give me a break. Yes, you're right. It was previously owned by your dad, but I bought the rights to the property and house from him. What are you talking about? I think it was like six or seven years ago. Your mother. She was a victim of a fraud. She had a considerable amount of money stolen from her. Well, long story short, I put up the money to pay off her debts, and in return, your father gave me the deeds to the property and house. Why did you have that much money? I mean, you were just a housewife all those years. No way you would have saved that much. I'm not a housewife. Yes, I did all the household chores and cooked the meals, but I was working too. As a matter of fact, I run a business. Uh, pardon me? You own a company? Yes, all my employees work from home. You know, remote work. We have meetings on a daily basis. We don't have an office, so I don't need a commute. I was always working at home, so you may not have noticed, but I'm actually the president of the company. The CEO, if you may. No way! You're making all that up! 
No, it's true. Not making it up. That's why I was able to repay your mother's debt. Are you really serious? So, do you now understand why I was so adamant about staying? It's my house. And that means you'll have to pay rent on that house, which is $2,000 a month. Wait a second! Did you just say $2,000 a month? Are you crazy? I can't pay that much every month. I'm a college student, for God's sake. Excuse me? I thought you said you had no problem taking care of it all. That you were an adult now. You're a college student, a grown woman. That's what you said, right? Yeah, I did say that, but until now... Don't tell me you want me to keep paying for you. Is that what you want me to do? You said it was your house, but then you want a stranger to pay for everything? That makes no sense. You're not saying that, right? I was. I'm not saying that, but I can't pay $2,000 a month. Well, if you're planning on living there, you're going to have to pay rent or... You'll have to buy that house for me somehow. Sorry, but those are your only two options. Ugh, you're not serious. That's not fair. If you ignore the rent payments for, say, three months, I'm going to have to evict you from the house. I'm sorry, but it's the law. That's it for now. I'm going to be pretty busy, so... I'll send all the necessary documents by mail in a few days, so look them over and then decide what you're going to do. Okay, then see you again. Wait a second, Carol. You can't just... Wait! Don't cut me off! Uh, excuse me, Carol. Are you good to talk? Hey, Amy. What's up? That's strange. I never heard you call me Carol before. It was always, hey, you, or something to the effect. Yeah, well, that was because, you know, I, I was only... I just thought maybe it was about time I forgave you for everything. Uh, sorry? Forgive me for what? For, well, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is just... Got it out of my system, so to speak, and I suppose there was a little misunderstanding. Sorry, Amy. You're really not making much sense. What are you trying to say? I was just trying to say, well, you know, I'm saying you can return to the house if you want. Excuse me? But you just kicked me out of the house just the other day. Yeah, but I gave it some thought, and after you left, well, I was... I just realized how important you were to the house and my life. I just wanted... Well, to say that, you know... I'm sorry, I don't know. Just spit it out, Amy. Okay, I'll say it for you. You can't manage that huge house yourself. And you can't pay the rent. And you want me to come back. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I was just, you know... Yeah. I know your father left you some money, and I rejected any inheritance, but... That was still not enough for you to buy back the house. If you used it solely on rent, well, that wouldn't last long. By the time you start working and making a little money, nothing will be left. Of course, there's all kinds of other expenses that will come up. Yeah, that's right. It's hard just keeping the house clean on a daily basis. I also can't make meals every day. I always end up just buying some things at the 7-Eleven. But then again, I can't just skip school. I have to continue my studies. I'm just constantly thinking about the rent and how I'm going to pay for it every month. To be honest, I'm emotionally exhausted. I can't continue like this. I saw all this coming. I kept trying to warn you this would happen. When you said you were going to live there alone, I was concerned. You never help with the cooking or the house chores. It all seems so easy when someone else is doing it for you. It's not easy to maintain a household all by yourself. All you've done over the years, I had no idea. I finally realized you have done so much, but I took such a despicable attitude towards you. I was such a jerk. I'm really... I'm really sorry, Carol. I mean it. I swear I'll never kick you out or demand that you leave or anything. I will never ignore you like I did. I swear I'll do my best to get along with you. So, please come back. Let's live together again. Please, Carol. I'm sorry, but I really can't help you, Amy. Huh? Pardon me? You kicked me out of the house simply because you didn't like me. You never even tried to get to know me. You ignored me all these years. All of a sudden, you find out that it's hard living on your own. So now you want me to come back? I don't think so. I mean, come on, Amy. Think about what you're saying. But, like I said, I regret what I said. I know I was a little hard on you, but that's all over now. I'm really sorry for how I treated you, so please, please forgive me. I would appreciate it if you would stop apologizing. 
it just seems so superficial. You want me to come back not because you truly feel remorse. You just want someone to pay the bills, someone to clean and cook for you. Isn't that right? No, that's not it. You got me all wrong, Carol. I really mean it. I really want to be friends with you, get to know you better. Well, I really don't want to be friends with you, to be honest. We never been close even though we lived together for all those years before your father died. I tried all those years to try and be your friend, for you to accept me, but all you did was ignore me for 10 years. Even now, all you want to do is use me for your advantage, am I right? I have no obligation to help you, Amy. Please don't say that, please! I need your help! Please! Mom! Amy, you're a total stranger, remember? Don't go acting like you're my daughter all of a sudden. You can't just leave me! Alright then. I expect the rent starting from next month. Don't be late. I'll send the bank information to you as soon as possible. Okay, see you. Wait, please, Carol! Mom! It wasn't supposed to turn out this way! I really mean it! I was wrong! Please forgive me! Please come back! After that, I received several phone calls from her continuing to apologize and pleading for me to forgive her. But I could still perceive that her ulterior motive was to get out of cooking and doing household chores. But most of all to pay the rent. In order to get her to see the light, I contacted my late husband's sister, Marcia. I asked her to take Amy in and to discipline her, to teach her how to be on her own. I knew Marcia was a strict mother. After all, she raised two wonderful sons and three beautiful daughters. Under her guidance, I'm sure she'll teach her to be a responsible and upstanding young woman. As for the house, it will remain empty for a while. I hope to maintain and keep it in good condition for the foreseeable future. After Amy finishes college and hopefully realizes her mistake and truly understands how she acted all these years, I plan to transfer the deeds to the house and property to her someday. Then I will just fade away and let her go on with her life. I do not plan to live with Amy in the future, but after all, she is my daughter-in-law, the daughter of a man I loved and cared for. I want Amy to be happy, and I hope someday she'll appreciate what I did for her. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.